welcome to the second how-to video on this channel. In this video, I'll show you how to build a realistic road layout for a downtown. That being said, while the tips and advice I give in this video will help you towards making realistic downtown roads, it's worth noting that there is no perfect way of building a downtown road layout, neither in real life or in skylines. That being said, this video will definitely help you along in the process of building road layouts that are realistic in how they are made and in how they interact with varying factors around them. Here is a list of the mods I've used. These are just the bare bones essentials for road laying, and I've linked my full mod collection down below. I've also listed the creators of most of the roads I've used. I'll link their collections down below as well. The first thing you want to do before you even lay your first road is plan out how you're going to structure your downtown and your city as a whole. I've thrown together a quick plan here that will define how we build our layout. I've placed offices in the financial core, right between the ridge line and the water, which gives easy highway connections and serves as a buffer between the residences and the port. Residential buildings will almost always have higher levels of development around the water as land values are higher. Knowing what the plan for the city is will allow us to build a road layout that will function perfectly within the city. So I've done the highway and the main train station. We're going to start off with the main arteries which carry people in and out of downtown. These are the primary roads of my layout and affect where other roads in development will be. I recommend that in addition to your main waterfront arterial, you should place a smaller road that runs closer and more in line with the waterfront. This is done in places such as Detroit, Toronto and Shanghai and keeps more traffic away from waterfront public spaces. Next, we're going to add a few more arterials that aren't connected to the highway. I'm not a huge fan of the large median on these roads, which is unrealistic in dense areas, but this was the only good quality large road with bike lanes I could find. In modern downtowns, bike lanes are becoming more and more common. Another hallmark of downtown areas is one-way roads. So, now that we have our basic arterial layout completed, we're going to fill out the grid with one-way roads, many of which have bike lanes. We've filled out the core, but the grid is looking too perfect. And the best tool to diversify your grid, and later on your skyline, is by running a diagonal road through it, like Market Street in San Francisco. That being said, you should consider what factors would affect where you put your diagonal road. For example, this road historically would have connected the warehouses at the waterfront to the train station. It's also very important to ensure that for every one-way road going in one direction, you have one facing the opposite, as I have done with these roads here, which I upgraded to be three lanes with one-way bike lanes, enabling more cars to pass through. Here, to further diversify the grid, I'm placing roads between the small and big waterfront roads at a 90 degree angle to the smaller one, like in Lower Manhattan. This gives your future skyline much more interestingly angled buildings. We're just looping the end of this tram line because it has nowhere else to go and will instead serve as a rapid downtown transit option. You'll notice that this area looks weird and very ungrid-like, but say if you were to look at the intersection of Yesler Way and 3rd Avenue in Seattle, or really anywhere in Boston, you'll realize that real-life infrastructure is almost never perfect or even well thought out. And if you want realism, you're going to have to have areas like these, which do add a lot of personality to your layout. For this area here by the shore, which will be primarily residential, we don't really need any arterials parallel to the waterfront road, since the highway and the waterfront road are sufficient to carry through traffic. We will add an arterial perpendicular to the waterfront to connect this area to the train station. In front of the train station, we've put a road with bus and taxi lanes, as it's very important to give ample connection options at your train stations. While grids are very realistic and effective, as you move away from your downtown core, it's okay to let your road layouts become more windy and less direct while not having a huge impact on your track. Now we're going to build the grid up to the base of the mountain. While in many cities there is development up to the base of hills and even moving up them, 
Most road layouts end up the base, with just one or two roads snaking their way up. To build such roads, use the topography view in the info panel, and only go up a line or two every 20 units. A great way to ensure that your layout is both realistic and interesting is through using different types of roads throughout the different areas of your city. Different areas have different needs in terms of size, speed, and usage, and your grid should reflect that. For example, as the roads move into where the port would be, there is much less demand for bike lanes, and as such, the roads should be more geared towards the heavy traffic such as trucks. Now I'm just placing where a hypothetical metro line would be. The trams cover much of the necessary transportation, and this metro line would connect the suburbs to downtown and the port. There really isn't the need for more lines, as much of the transit-free space is just mountains. Anyhow, that's all for our downtown layout, and I hope this video and the tips within it help with your own future layouts. For the next video on this channel, I'll be using this road layout to show you how to build a skyline that is both realistic, and more importantly, aesthetically pleasing. So don't forget to subscribe or leave a like to catch that video. Thank you for watching.